Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my studio and my watercolor demonstration today. I'm broadcasting on YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitch, uh, live broadcast, and uh, also have the uh, live uh, chat room on. So if you have any comments uh, or uh, have questions, put them on there and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'm here in the studio today with my wife, Gloria. Welcome, everyone. And uh, she'll be monitoring the broadcast, also uh, checking the chat room for me. Uh, for those of you who are first time, uh, first time on, uh, please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and uh, give me a like. They, they're all appreciated, and they help with my rating. Thank you very much. Uh, what I'm going to do today is we're going to talk about, or I'm going to demonstrate, uh, aerial perspective. Now, aerial perspective is a, a watercolor technique, or a painting technique, uh, to uh, demonstrate the distance objects that are fainter and have a uh, lighter value. And they also turn a little bluer in uh, as far as the color is concerned. That's because of the atmospheric conditions. The further away they are, they look a little bit dimmer and they look a little bit bluer because of the haze and because of the atmospheric, uh, uh, temp atmospheric uh, properties. So we're gonna talk about that today and we're gonna paint a demonstration. So let me go to my uh, overhead camera. And let's talk about today. Now here's my, uh, here's my reference photograph. This is the one on the waterway, uh, which I, I, I really go down there quite a bit on the weekends on my plane air. And you'll see here, this is a, now this is a scene I took early in the morning. This is about sunrise. Now I'm facing west. So the, the sun is rising behind me, but I get this nice glow in the sky. And I think what that's from, uh, phenomenally I can think about it, is this reflection in the sky, in the clouds there, of the actual sunlight coming from behind, uh, which is the opposite direction. But I got a nice glow there. I really, that's what really attracted my attention. I got that nice glow, yellow, and a little bit of oranges at the horizon. And uh, But you can see back here, uh, those background trees way in the background, they're going to be much lighter and have a bluer tint to those. And also, as I come forward, uh, the trees will get a little bit, a little bit uh, more colorful and as I come forward. Uh, but this is now as a photograph. Photographs are okay as far as references, and uh, but the colors are not really uh, that bright on here, and uh, that's where as an artist, uh, it's always good to have a uh, hands-on uh, look at that. So what I did, I did a plein air, I did a plein air sketch. Uh, this is a plein air sketch I did on location. You can see here I started with very much very light here in the background. As I came forward, the, the colors got brighter down into the foreground. So this is just a study, a color study that I did uh, on location uh, last weekend. But I'm gonna do a, a, a painting today in the, in, the, uh, in the studio. So let's put, the, let's put aside the, uh, the reference photo, put it over to the side. And also did uh, my design drawing. And you can see here it's the same, same drawing from the uh, reference photograph. But it gives you the sizes and perspective and so forth. Now this drawing and my Photograph will be in my phone watercolors page on my on my website, uh, everswatercolors. www.everswatercolors.com. So I'll put I'll put the uh, put the drawing aside. I'll put it up close. That's my reference drawing. So and I've transferred the drawing to my uh, 140 pound Gemini watercolor paper. And this is a quarter sheet, measures 15 inches long and 11 inches wide. Uh, 140 pound cold press archival watercolor paper uh, which is also on my on my website everswatercolors.com now the paint uh, paints I'm going to use today are Holbein artist watercolor paints uh, and uh, here I got a couple brushes I'm going to be using these are Holbein watercolor brushes this is a three quarter inch flat and this is a number 16 round I'll be using both of those today uh, but the colors this is a cerulean blue at the top I'll be using that in the sky and then I'm going to add a little bit of gray which will be a mixture of quinacridone violet and Payne's gray. Then I've got uh, lemon yellow for that uh, yellow area in the sky and I've got a little bit of yellow orange for the little orange area in the sky. Uh, then I'll move down into the background colors which will be uh, cobalt blue and then I've got uh, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and some red. That'll be some of those trees off to the right side as, you come, as I come forward. And there'll be some shadows and so forth which I'll put in the uh, ultramarine deep blue 
uh, here. Now I'm gonna I'm not gonna have green and I'm not taking green from the palette. I'm gonna mix my greens with uh, lemon yellow, and uh, I got several blues here, so I'm gonna mix my greens uh, to make the green mixtures for the trees. So first of all, uh, I'll put these two brushes aside here. I'm going to wet the paper, and uh, I'm gonna use my hockey hockey brush. The large I'm gonna use a large and medium size hockey, uh, and these are these are natural hair. These are these are uh, goat hair, natural hair brushes, and they hold a lot of water and a lot of paint. I, I just love painting with them. But for backgrounds and large areas, these are ideal. Uh, and these are also on my website, everswatercars.com. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet the sky down. Uh, I'm going to take the large hake, and just put it in plain water, and I'm going to wet the sky. That'll help the uh, paint move a little better, a little faster and smoother. And uh, also, because the, the sky is going to be reflected in the water, I'm going to go ahead and put some, put some, uh, put some water down here in, in the water area also. I'll be painting both of those at the same time. I'm going to put the same color, the sky color reflected in the water, so we'll do that. Okay, all right. So now I'm going to take the... Take this uh, middle size hockey, and I'm going to pick up. Uh, I'm going to start out with the uh, cerulean blue for the sky. So I'm going to pick that up, and I'm going to touch that out. I'm going to test that color out on a sheet here. I'm going to get need a little more need a little more paint in there, a little more pigment. So I'm picking up a little bit of uh, cerulean blue out of the palette. Get a nice. Uh, Get a nice brush pool. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, paint the sky. Starting at the top, I'll start with a cerulean blue. So it was, it was a sunrise, the sunrise sky, it, uh, it was blue at the top. And then as it came down, it was also uh, overcast that day. So a little, a little bit of overcast. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of... Uh, Cornacone violet mixed in with a little bit of Payne's gray. Just give me a gray, just a gray color. Let me trust that out. A little more gray in there, a little more gray. I'm going to come across there, I'm going to get that across, a little streak across there. Now, you know, watercolor will also dry, if it looks darker as you put it down, that's fine because it's going to dry lighter. Uh, as it dries. Watercolor starts out looking dark and then as it dries out uh, uh, the color goes uh, goes lighter. Okay now I'm going to pick up the uh, the three-quarter inch brush, the flat brush. I'm going to pick up a little bit of that uh, lemon yellow and start out putting a little bit of yellow up here in the sky. Mix it with a lot of words. I don't want it that I don't want it too bright. But it'll give a nice it'll give a nice glow to the sky because it was it was uh, as you saw from the photograph reference photograph there was uh, uh, some some I had some yellow in the sky which was really a surprise at that time of the morning and that the, the area I was facing I was facing in the west. So what I do when I when I'm out painting, uh, I I I I see all kinds of things that are very interesting uh, things happening in nature, and that's the things that you try to grasp while you're out searching and painting. You try to find an interesting element. In this case here, the sky was very was very interesting. It had an interesting color in the sky. Okay. All right, so we'll let that one, okay. Let's see if I want to leave that yet. Uh, I think what I'll do is I'll pick up a little more, a little more of that cerulean, a little more of cerulean blue and put just a, mother, a little more paint up here in the sky, just a little more. So I bring it down to that, to that, uh, Mix it in a little bit more with that gray, get the color I want. Okay. All right. 
So I'm going to go ahead and dry this because uh, before I go any further, I'm going to have to dry this painting out. So I'm going to use a blow dryer. I'm going to turn on the blow dryer. So what I've done is I've uh, re-wet the uh, paper. And uh, I started with the uh, blue sky, then I put a little bit of gray, a little mixture of uh, black and violet with a little bit of paint gray. And then I put in the yellow, yellow lemon, and the orange, yellow orange, to give me that uh, bright, bright color in the sky. See this area over here on the right side, where, which I want to work on first over here. The first of a dry on its own. So normally I uh, like to let my paintings dry naturally, but because of for demonstration purposes, i uh, use a blow dryer. All right, then you check with the back of the hand to make sure if it feels warm, then it's dry, which is okay. So now I'm going to pick up... Uh, I'm going to use the number 16 round. I'm going to start putting in some of the background trees. Now, the first one I see uh, is that tree line. I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt blue here. A little bit of cobalt blue. Because these are the trees. These are the trees that are way in the background, and they're going to have a, a blue. They're going to. They're in a far distance, so they're going to have that blue color to them. I'm painting over top of that orange, so it'll give it another color too. So it's okay; it doesn't matter. Uh, get a variety of color back there, but it's just going to be a blue overall blue color because of the distance and uh, because of the time of day, and also the distance, how far away, and the atmosphere is going to change that color from a, a green trees into into a blue tree line. Now I'm going to continue on now. Uh, I'm going to take that a little darker now and I'm going to go in and put in a this layer here now that's that's closer now it's going to still be blue but it's going to be a little slightly darker value So now I'm, I'm working on layers now. So I have a layer. I have a layer of trees here, and uh, this layer here is is coming forward. So it's still going to be a little bit bluer because it's in the distance. And then I'm going to make this uh, now. As I come forward now, I'm going to now I'm going to make some changes. Now this is going to have uh, a little more green and in, mixed into it. So I'm going to as I come forward, I'm going to be mixing up with this cobalt blue. I'm going to mix up a little bit of yellow with that. So that as I come forward now, it's going to get a little bit greener because I'm coming forward. So that that's the part of the aerial perspective. That you find in nature. Now I'm coming forward now into the paint from the paint from the foreground from the background. I'm coming now closer to me in my observation, and I'm going to get it's going to get a little bit greener. And I'm going to get even greener. So I get get a little more blue into that, a little more a little more yellow mixed in with that. So I'm really I'm in my painting here. I'm really I'm I'm uh, uh, exaggerating a little bit more of the coloring and so forth, and that that's the purpose of art, uh, the interpretation, uh, the feeling you have about a subject and so forth, and you can make changes. And as I saw it physically, uh, physically there on location, uh, there was a brighter a brighter green at the at the as it got closer to me, my observation point. Uh, it, it was a greener, a greener color, which is exactly what I expected to see, because that's what I was looking for. It was a uh, looking for a landscape view, and I wanted aerial perspective because I wanted to demonstrate that, and I found a 
a pretty good subject matter here that's pretty easy to understand as far as the color goes. So as you can see, it went from blue way in the background to come forward, it gets greener. So I'm really emphasizing that uh, as far as the painting goes. I want to emphasize that and make that a little bit more descriptive of what I saw. And I think what I'll do though, because the green is so uh, powerful, uh, I'm going to take a little bit of a uh, little bit of burnt sienna and just kind of put some variety in there because these were trees and I'm going to put a little bit of brown in there because some of them were they weren't all green green they had some brown in there because you know it's, it's it's a late fall and there were some ground there were some brown leaves out there on top of those green treetops so we'll put a little bit of that in there just just to, just to break that up a little bit so it's not all solid looking green Okay, all right. Now, um, see the next thing I want to work on. Uh, so, okay. Now, I think what I'll do is there is also a very uh, light path here of green underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Also, I've got the greens working. So I'm going to take uh, the same green mixture, and I think what I'll, yeah, I think I'll use a round brush. Now I'm going to start here. Now this this is a area. This area is grass. It was grass down on the on the, uh, uh, on the bank here. And I'm going to put that in. It starts out here. There's a darker green back here toward the middle ground area, and as I come forward, again the the, uh, the green got lighter. It got much lighter. So this was this was the grass along the edge of the bank. As I got further, it got even lighter, lighter green. You can see here. So the the uh, again the aerial perspective because the further back it's it's greener, a little bluer here. That makes it darker green. And then this area here was really light compared. So this was a light green, light green grass up here, and the sun was shining. A little bit of sunlight was shining in this area. Just even early in the morning, there was a little bit of sunlight here in this section here. Okay, all right. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Now I can go back. Uh, let's see. I can go back here in the background. Uh, the only structure back here I can start building is there was the. Uh, this is the waterway. This is the locks. There's the locks back here, which this is all wooden gate here's a wooden gate that opens up for the locks so I can put that in and I'm gonna I'm gonna really, I'm gonna simplify this quite a bit just gonna have us just have a little shape out here there's a little there's a little uh, building there that the operator works in but I'm gonna leave it all the same just be one area it's got a dark color to it and it'll be brown I think what I'll do though is I'm going to take a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and go in there and darken that brown up just a little bit more because it's way in the background so it's going to be further away so I don't want that brown to be as bright there I don't want it to have a little bit of dullness to it Put a little bit of, a little bit of there okay that'll be nice and dark and brown but that's going to be this this area here is going to be kind of the impact area because it's got that nice contrast of color and values and then that it'll show up much better there okay um, now the next area I want to get is these row of trees now there was a, well, there was a row of trees here and I'm going to use the keep using the brown brush this is a good one to use anyway and I'm going to start out with uh, a dull a dull um, It'll be dull when I finish with it. I'm going to start with burnt sienna. 
And as I come forward, it's going to get a little bit lighter and brighter. So I'm working on sections here, and it'll be a little. I'm going to, it picks up a little bit of reddish color. These were these were trees that had a little bit of reddish, little red, reddish color to them on the branches. So I'm going to use that as a color factor. So burnt sienna, and I'm going to put add a little bit of red to this now as I come forward to enhance that color. Well, burnt sienna is the base, is the base color, and then a little bit of accent of reds, a little accent of red in there. So these are these, these are these uh, trees that were along the side of the waterway. And so I'm enhancing the color as I come forward. It can be a little bit brighter, a little bit more defined. As I get further away, it gets a little bit more or less defined. I'll let that dry a little bit. Okay, now there was. Uh, yeah, I, I don't understand. Oh, the, What's the question? Is the, there a question? No, the um, the yellow is so much more vibrant in the studio. I don't know. What oh, oh I, close up if it would show a little bit. Well, better. I can do that when I you get to a point. We'll get a little close up. I gotta put in another uh, another value in here. And what I'm gonna do now? I'm gonna paint. There's a there's a bulkhead here along the edge of the, of the bank here. I'll go ahead and put that on. I'm going to use the I'm use a three quarter inch black, uh, flat brush. And I'm going to put that in. I'm going to use a, a vertical stroke here. So this bulkhead along the along the edge of the waterway here is between the uh, it's on the, next to the gra uh, green grass and by the in front of the water next to the water edge here. And also this uh, we've got aerial perspective, but also because we're going from large to small, we also have a little bit of linear perspective here also because as we go further back into the painting things get smaller so that's another a little benefit here of talking about perspective that uh, I'm really talking more, mainly about aerial perspective today but we all also can talk about the sizing here different sizing as we go back uh, it would be uh, much smaller as we go back into the, into the background okay I'm gonna put some more greenery under this uh, under this tree here Now these were trees now behind these trees. There were green. There was green behind the trees on the on the ground behind this. So I'm going to go ahead and build this up a little bit. And I'm just I'm taking out some of those uh, white. Clean up some of the white areas along the edge of the trees. Just filling in a little bit. All right, now I'm going to go over here and work to the, on the left side of the, on the on the left side of the painting for a while. So over here, uh, basically I've got one big bush over here, and I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to use the uh, flat brush, and I'm going to mix up some uh, some darker greens. Now this is going to be uh, ultramarine blue, 
mixed in with uh, mixed in with yellow yellow lemon so mix up a, a little mix of uh, now what I'm gonna do here now I'm gonna take the uh, take the brush and I'm gonna I'm gonna load uh, one part of it with more yellow to it. So I got the I got double loaded here. I've got yellow yellow on one edge corner and I got the green on the other corner. So what I do here is I'm going to put the yellow side out out toward where the light is. Now pick up some more of that yellow. So the outer the outer edge here is a little bit lighter because there's more light out here. And as I go back into the center of the tree, uh, it'll be darker. So I'm trying to I'm just trying to uh, show that here in the painting a little bit that there's uh, a little darker as we go back into the shadow part of the tree. And I can pick up some lighter lighter value here around the edge. So I'm playing with the uh, playing with the flat brush. I'm using the corner of the brush to get the uh, definition of the corner of the uh, edges. And now I'm using a flat part of the brush to uh, to put in the large brush strokes for the main part of the tree in the background. You move it over so you can see the brush strokes. All I'm using is flat brush strokes here just to cover the tree. Then I'm using a corner of the brush to get the edges. So work down here, I get a little more of that uh, darker blue, ultramarine blue mixed in with a little bit of lemon yellow. Give me a darker green color. Okay, I'm going to hold off right there. Okay, I've got to uh, also paint the water in. Okay, uh, number one, I want to do is go back and wet this area again and put in the uh, put in the color of the of the sky. And also uh, put in the color of the, of the water. So I'm going to go in and wet the uh, wet the wet the uh, water paper. Okay, now I'm going to begin. Now back here, I'm going to begin with the colors that I. I'm moving backwards now because I'm coming forward. So I'm going to start with the yellow, orange. At this point here, and as I come forward, here get a little bit more on that, a little bit more. Okay, as I come forward, I pick up the yellow yellow lemon, just a hint of yellow lemon out here. Okay, let that go. And then uh, the next color I'm going to pick up is the uh, the sky color, which in this case uh, I used uh, cerulean blue. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of that gray color, just to keep the same colors in the sky, the same as in the water. So reflection in the water will be the same. Okay. All right. Now let me dry this. I've got both of them wet now, so let me get the bottom, let me get the sky dry.
And I dry out the tree a little bit too. Okay, so I've started uh, over here with a tree with a little bit of ultramarine blue and uh, yellow lemon colors. We started on this large tree on the left. It's the foreground. Then I went ahead and painted in the, the water reflection using the same colors I had in the sky. Uh, the yellow orange, then in the yellow lemon, then back to the uh, cerulean blue, mixed in a little bit of uh, Payne's gray and we're not going to violet. Staying consistent with the same colors. A little damp. And I'll take dry off, uh, dry it off real good. But I'm going to be painting back in this area. Reflection here, a little bit more on the tree over here. Okay, checking the paper uh, with the back of my hand, make sure it's dry enough. Okay, we're good. We're in good shape. Okay, uh, now I'm going to go back and work on, back on this tree again. Using a... Sandra says she likes the perspective of the trees leading into the sunrise. Say again. Uh, Sandra says she likes the perspective of the trees leading into the sunrise. Oh, okay. Well, the perspective is both. Man, we have two. We have two. Uh, two factors going on here. We have aerial perspective, which is the color change from a more vibrant color in the foreground, and then going back, it's going to it's going to be fainter color, and it's going to be more blue. And then we have the uh, linear portion, which means the as things go back, things get smaller, and they go at angles. So you can see here the parallel lines will go. They'll start converging here toward this, toward the. Uh, focal point of the painting or the air where everything comes together. Okay, now over here I want to put in uh, a little bit, just a few, a little bit of touch of uh, A little touch of uh, burnt sienna. I'm going to put some tree trunks here in this uh, bush. Get some color going. Little brush strokes here with the uh, number 16 round. Just getting a little bit of trunk, tree trunks moving on the side over here. <clears throat> Added in some tree trunks on the left side bush over here with uh, uh, using the number 16 round and also uh, using the burnt sienna. Okay. Uh, this bush over here is just to give some interest to the foreground. It's not, not the main part of the painting right now. Okay, now I want to go ahead and put the uh, reflection, uh, reflection into the water. And I'm going to use uh, use a I'm going to use a large brush. Uh, I'm going to use the hockey brush. Let's see. And the colors I want to use is basically the colors that are reflected here. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of this, a uh, little bit of burnt sienna, and red. It'll come off this side over here. I'm going to go a little bit darker with that, but I'll just get started out. I'm going to start out with a base, base coat. I'm going to pick up a little bit of darker green. That's a mixture of, uh, I'll use, I can use ultramarine over here. Ultramarine, a little bit of yellow. 
a little bit of, get a little bit of a yellow cast in there. Okay. Now down here, uh, to be consistent with the painting, I'm going to use a little bit of that uh, cobalt blue because the reflection is going to be from this trees, these trees down here, which are a little bit, a little bit uh, blue value, a little bit blue color, and um, I can make them a little bit darker than. And the the reflection can be either darker, darker or lighter than the actual. Uh, object. Let's see. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and start putting in. Oh, got too much. Got a little too much pigment there on the brush. I'll wipe that off on a sponge. And I'll get put that uh, little bit of that burnt sienna here in the water as a reflection, and then pick up a little bit of that red reflection. A little bit more over here. So I'm trying to uh, use the reflection into the water, the same sort of colors that are that's reflecting in the, in the land from the landscape. And I'll pick up a little darker, a little bit darker tone on the green for the trees. That's uh, ultramarine blue mixed in a little bit of lemon yellow. And this the, the reflections won't be as vibrant as the actual items themselves. They'll be a little bit duller because they're being reflected, and the light's also hitting those. Which the, the lighting effect is also affecting the reflection. How much light is actually in this area? Okay, that's not bad. And there's a reflection over here also. Just I'll capture a little bit over here. Let's start with a little bit. Uh, I think I'm going to use a little more blue in this, a little bit more. I'll use a cobalt blue and uh, the reflection in the water. Uh, and I'll pick up a little bit of green in there to get some green highlights. But this will be the, this will be the reflection color here from this tree. Hitting the edge, hanging over the edge of the waterway and it's going to be reflecting Reflecting into the water. Get a little variety here on the edge because there's a variety, the variety of the branches here hanging over the, over the edge of the water here. Be be a difference. So kind of simulate that a little bit. You leave a little bit of the sky color popping through as a little bit of uh, movement in the water. And I can also put a little bit of a, uh, so you get a little shadow color, maybe put a little bit of cobalt blue mixed in with a little bit of Payne's gray, just give me a little gray color and kind of put that in here. Get some shadows here up on the shore on this tree okay okay now the thing I'm, the only thing I'm missing right now is a little bit of definition over here on these trees so I'm going to use the uh, small number eight round and I'm going to take uh, I'm going to put some I'm going to put some uh, trunks out here on these trees so I'm going to take a little bit of that burnt sienna 
a little bit of ultramarine blue to make a nice, uh, not that dark, but we'll get like a medium brown. Do more brown color in there. Okay, that's it. Mixing up a light, a medium brown color, and we're going to go in here and put some tree trunks. And these are the tree trunks that were up here reflecting, or uh, in the, that were here on the ground with these large clumps of uh, foliage all grouped in. I'm going to put a few of those in there just to get the, to get the impression of what we have. And then they'll get uh, they'll get smaller and, and further further uh, closer together as we go back again perspective wise. So the tree, these trees are always lined the whole side of the uh, waterway down here, past next to this uh, in the grass, and also along the the bulkhead here, a whole line of trees. Okay. All right. I think the last thing I want to do is just kind of put the foreground in. And then we'll go back and take a look at the old. So the foreground was a very simple. It was a, I was overlooking a, a, a bank here. So all I can do here is just put in a, let me take the flat brush. I'll take the number, the three quarter inch flat brush. And let's see, I'll put in a little bit of burnt sienna for the edge. A little bit of burnt sienna. A little bit of that cobalt. A little bit of the ultramarine blue. And I'm going to put a, uh, this was a bank along the edge of the waterway here. I'm going to put that in. It's a nice dark brown. It's a, actually a rusty, a rusty uh, metal edge. So I'll simulate that here with a dark brown rust color. So this was like a rusty old, uh, rusty edge of the bank. And it came in, uh, it came in about 10 inches in, I guess. So we're going to approximate that. Uh, just, just the edge of the bank. Okay, then the rest was just going to be uh, green grass. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, <clears throat> lemon yellow in with, mixed in with this. Uh, I got cobalt here, but I can pick up a little bit of ultramarine blue also. So this grass had was green, it had browns in it, and it also had some yellows in it, but it's kind of a mixture of different colors down here. So we'll just we'll just kind of simulate the the texture. Well, what I like to do is pick up one color, let's say I'll pick up a little bit of brown, and then I'll put a corner into the yellow. And that way I get a mixture of yellow and brown where I can pick up a little bit of blue on one corner and a little bit of yellow on the other corner. And I can get a variety of, of greens. Now I'm going to start overlapping that, uh, that rusty uh, metal corner or metal edge. So I'm going to just, I'll start. So use a little bit of brush stroke here to just show, uh, simulate the grass, weeds growing up here. It is really weeds or grass growing up here next to this bank.
the autumn colors there were a lot of browns in there also browns greens let's see let me get some more of that more blue mixed in with that there we go okay And then we'll do a little brush stroke here of uh, uh, showing some leaves, some uh, grasses growing up here along the edge. Can also use the round brush. Use the round brush with a, a round with a, a round brush stroke. You know, we're doing a crisscross stroke, uh, up and down, left and right. Dragging that round brush uh, over, over the surface. I can do a dry brush just by dragging the brush over a little bit, uh, a little bit thicker paint. So just all right. So that builds up the texture here in the foreground, uh, just to get, break up the. Or add in, add in a little bit of dimension here in the foreground. Let's see. Okay. And I think I can go back here now. Let's, now let's start, let's clean up a little bit of the edges now. I'll take a little bit of that. I'm going to take a little bit of burnt sienna. Make sure that green. I'll come back over here and kind of cover in some of this brown. There was a lot of brown, a lot of brownish green along the edge of this waterway. The leaves are turning, are turning brown. And let's see. Let me give me. Let me get some more green up in there. I get uh, a little bit of that ultramarine blue mixed in with that yellow. More yellow. Go back up here. Little crisscross crows to fill, uh, fill in some of those gaps, not gaps, but just fill in, give a little more texture up here. Little crisscross strokes, just left and right, left and right, using a flat brush. Okay. And let's see. What else do I want to do over there? Uh, I think more realistically, in this type of landscape, uh, there would be a uh, Along the water, there'll be a little, uh, uh, an edge along here, which is because this is wet. There's water hitting the bank here, so I'm, I'm going to put a little darker line here. This is kind of a water line where the water is hitting the edge of this bulkhead, and so it'll be a little bit darker. It's like a wet, little wet corner there on the bulkhead and the water. Just separate the two much better than leaving them alone. Okay. Sorry about the head. Okay, let's take. I'm going to look back. I'm going to sit back here and take a look at this. Uh, let's see. Okay, well we we put in the sky. The sky I took away from the photograph. The sky had a uh, had that yellow orange look in it. So I picked that yellow orange look up from the photograph. I think I like that that yellow orange. Even though it's not, it's not typical for this type of day, because you shoot usually all gray, all gray because of the, of the sky, but this happened to show up, so I picked that. That's wonderful. And then I uh, I got the blue blue gray sky, and then I put in these yard, uh, reddish trees with a background, and I I made sure I had a blue tint back here in the background. This is where the aerial perspective changes the color of the of the tree. These green trees now become blue, bluish, more bluish. Now as they come forward, they get a little more defined. Here they are reddish, they were brownish red, then they come a little more red as they come forward. And the greens changed up here from a, a, a bluish green up to a, a yellowish green, a little bit of brown mixed in. Uh, this big bush here was in the foreground, so it was all greens and browns all and yellows all together here. Uh, reflection uh, was the same colors that coming from the landscape onto the onto the water. The sky was reflected into the water, and uh, the, the trees 
and the bush reflected into the water. Okay, and let's see, there's only one area I want to clean up here, and that's my little area down here. This is the locks down here, which opens up to, for the boats to pass through. And uh, let's do a little close-up here of the actual... Okay, that is my uh, demonstration of aerial perspective showing the fainter, fainter colors as you go back and they turn a little bit bluer as you move into the background for aerial perspective. Okay? All right. Now, uh, this evening I'm going to, let's okay, um, that's going to, let's put that, let's put a little mat around that. Let's take, put a mat around that to show it off. Okay, we'll put a green mat on it like we, like we normally do. Okay. And, hmm. Can't figure out what the, Oh, I know what it is. Okay. I got it too far forward. I got the overhang there. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. Bring it up a little bit. Okay. There we go. Okay. All right. There we are. Uh, there, there it is matted. I think it turned out really good. I got perspective going in. I got the aerial perspective of the, of the bluer and, and dimmer, dimmer, uh, colors in the background. That's what exactly what our perspective is. Now, let's see. Do we have any questions or anything? Hi, right, Brazen. Uh, hi. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Next Thursday, uh, let's, let me go to the final. Let me go out. Okay. All right. Uh, I was going to show you one other I did. I did another one. Uh, I think I think this one still this one here was just a rough just a rough idea of the painting, and there's light coming down on that one, so that's not a good one to show either. Some more reflections in here. Yep. Okay. Okay. So that was another one. I think I think the one I did today is better. Not to not to compare the two, but I think uh, I think what I showed you was a, was a better representation. Okay. Let me go to the main camera. Where are we? Let me sit down first. Okay, moving to the main camera. Okay. Uh, okay, that concludes my uh, presentation today of aerial perspective today. And I hope you got something from that. Uh, the, the real lesson there is to uh, have a fainter uh, in the background, further away. It gets, your colors get fainter, objects get fainter because of the atmospheric uh, condition. And also they get a little bit bluer. That was what I was always trying to get across today, is those areas. So the demonstration was just to paint that. Uh, I'm gonna, next, thir next Thursday is Thanksgiving, so I'm not gonna be broadcasting next Thursday. So you all have a, a, a happy Thanksgiving. And I'm gonna be on this evening at 7.30 p.m. with Simply Drawing Whatever. And I'm gonna do a linear perspective lesson there, and I'll be a little bit different. But uh, today was a, I really wanted to talk about perspective, both in painting and also in drawing. So tonight we'll be doing that uh, live, simply drawing whatever at 7.30 p.m. So uh, you all have a th happy Thanksgiving next Thursday. I'll be thinking about you all, and pre I'll be preparing for uh, the week ahead. I'll have a couple of weeks to get ready for that one, so I'll have plenty of time. So you all have be safe. And uh, if you're traveling, be very careful. Be safe, especially if you're traveling anywhere. Uh, but have a, have a good time with your family. We're going to have a, a good time with our family. So we'll see you all next two weeks from now. Or I'll see you tonight at 7.30 at Drawing. And I'll see you two weeks from now on Thursday at 2 p.m. So until then, you all stay safe and take care. <laughs>